Hello everyone, welcome to automation community. In this session, we are going to see about PLC programming. So before going to the topic, please like and subscribe our channel. So let's see about PLC programming. So we have seen the basics of PLC in the previous section. So there we have seen a you know programming device which is a PC and in that PC we will be downloading the software of you know PLC and we will be start writing the program and there will be some special instructions will be there for writing the program. So we are going to see the basic instructions we will be using in the programming. So what is PLC programming? So to design and implement the concept in controller, we are using programming tools. PLC software built with plenty of instruction to write a logic. As I have already told in the previous session, each vendor is having separate PLC programs, programming software. But in common, we can do the PLC programming using five language. Let us see what are the five. So we have a ladder logic. So ladder logic is, is a more you know familiar and widely used programming method. So the second one is functional block diagram and the next is sequential function chart and the next is structured text and the last one is instruction list. So there are five ways to write the PLC program. So which way is convenient for you? You can choose according to your requirement. So in this course, we are going to see in ladder logic. So let's see the basics of ladder logic. So the name itself, it's telling a ladder. So it will be having two rails which are called as power rails. One is positive, another one is negative. So this is positive and this is negative. So the, these are the power rails where, you know, the power always flows from left to right. From this side to this side, the power will flow. So we have three major instruction or uh, you know the uh, important terms in, in, in when it comes to the programming. So those are normally open contact, normally closed contact and output coil. Okay, so what is normally, let's see about normally open contact. So it is like a switch. Imagine you have a switch at your home, right? So you will be turning on, your output will be on. If you turn off, your output will be off. So that type of switches are always called as normally open contact. What is this normally open contact means? Basically, it will not allow power to flow. If you are disturbing the state of the switch, it will allow to flow. Like how is in our home. Initially, the fan or the light will be in off condition only. If you turn on the switch, it will allow power to flow into the fan so that the fan is rotating. Right. So those type of switches are called as normally open contact. And we have one more contact which is called as normally closed contact. So it is just opposite to normally open contact. So normally closed contact will be always allowing power to flow. Imagine your fan is always in on condition. If you disturb the switch, your fan will off. That's it. That is normally closed contact. And we have an output device which is nothing but in our example, it's a fan. It's output. Fine. So this may be an input and that will be connected to the output. If you turn on, it will on. If you off, it will off. When it comes to normally closed contact, initially your output will be in on condition. If you disturb the switch, it will be going to off condition. So that's a very basic about ladder logic. So let's see one example for the ladder logic. 
to turn on a motor using a switch. Okay, so I'm using one switch and I'm connecting one motor to this. So I'm using a normally open contact here. Why I have used a normally open contact here? Because I want to turn on a motor by using a switch. So if I disturb the switch, the motor has to on. So what will happen? Power is here. 24 volt power is here. So this is plus, this is minus. So initially, as we have already discussed, normally open contact will not allow the power to flow from left to right. If you turn on, if you disturb this switch, it will allow this 24 volt to get into this. So that it will reach our output which makes our motor to on. That's it. It's the simplest example to understand the normally open contact. Okay, let's see one more example here. To turn on a motor using switch 1 or switch 2. So, I have two options to turn on a motor. So, when it comes to option, I am using a OR logic. This or this. If you turn on switch 1, motor will on. Or, if you turn on switch 2, that time also motor will on. So, that's it about example 2. To turn on a motor using two switches. So, I am using normally open contact here for both. Because I am going to make a contact. To make a contact means mostly we will be using a normally open contact. And we have the third example. To turn on a motor using switch 1. And to turn off the motor using switch Two. So, to make a contact, to make the contact in the sense, to turn on a motor using switch 1. So, for that I am using a normally open contact. To turn on a motor, to make a contact, I am using switch 1 connected to motor. To turn off the motor. So, to break the contact. To break the contact, I am using a normally closed switch to break this line. So, what will happen? Already switch 1 is on so that the contact is, you know, the power is, uh, you know, uh, running from left to right. So, motor is on. If you disturb the switch 2, what is the, uh, you know, uh, feature of normally closed contact? Initially, it will allow, it will allow the power to get in. But if you disturb, what will happen? The contact will break. So, that what will happen? motor will be in off condition. So, that is it about normally open and normally closed contact and this is the basics of ladder logic. So, let we will see more example in the upcoming session. I, I hope you have understood the ladder logic. If you like this video, please like and subscribe our channel. I will meet you in the next session. Thank you.